Hello, I'm Phil Bamforth from Rolls-Royce. This video gives an overview of the National Metrology Skills Alliance. In the video, we'll cover the problem that we, uh, the NMSA is trying to solve, um, who the NMSA are, what the standards that we've created look like, how can these standards be used, and what's the plan to deploy the standards, and then how you can get involved. So in any organisation, um, you'll typically have a set of role descriptions uh, for people uh, within the business. You'll have some skills and competency definitions and things that uh, you want people to be able to do to achieve those roles. You'll then have some uh, training, uh, either internal or external, external, that helps people develop those competencies. And often um, you might have a career development process that helps uh, uh, develop people through uh, through their career. So um, a typical organisation might have that and then the supply chain for that organisation might have similar looking things but maybe slightly different. Um, uh, academia and wider education might have some of this uh, particularly around uh, kind of the skills definition and training that's developed and then wider industry will have lots of um, lots of instances of these kind of resources in their organisation. And the problem we're trying to solve uh, for metrology is why can't we create all of this once and then use it across um, all the different uh, instances in the UK where this is important and, and hopefully beyond internationally as well. And some organisations have already done this. So, um, for example, non-destructive testing is covered by a range of ISO standards that define the competences of, of people doing NDT. And it's split into levels. You get level one, level two, level three. And I can then search on the internet for an NDT level three. And I can find out um, things like uh, what's the typical salary of an NDT level three? What's the sort of syllabus of what they're able to do? Uh, I can look at jobs. I can look at um, the exams and certification processes. And so having a standard for the skills required to do a particular activity becomes really powerful and, and a much more efficient way of developing people um, in metrology. So the objectives of the National Metrology Skills Alliance are to implement a, a standard for metrology skills um, that covers different skill levels, for, so from beginners through to much more experienced metrologists, and different disciplines within metrology such as flow or dimensional or temperature or control or force. Um, and, and within that framework, we want to define the competency requirements, so the things that people need to be able to do to do the typical tasks within metrology. We want to define a, a kind of a clear career development path for metrologists from the beginner levels through to those more experienced levels. We want to uh, implement this within an international standard. Um, and then we want uh, some sort of assurance or accreditation process so that individuals can demonstrate their level of competence against the standard. Um, organisations such as things like training providers can then demonstrate that their resources um, are, are aligned to the standard and ultimately different organisations have then got confidence when they kind of recruit and develop their people. So the National Metrology Skills Alliance was formed with um, a range of different organisations from across industry, um, academia and education, uh, and then also our, um, some of the national institutes and, uh, and national laboratories. And you can see some of the uh, examples of the organisations involved there. And uh, what, what's been really kind of important throughout this is having a really good cross section from lots of different areas. So we've got SMEs in there, we've got large organisations, um, we've got um, a really active participation from all those different groups. Um, and that's been really key so far to making good progress. So the way that the NMSA has developed uh, um, over the last kind of two or three years, we, we started off uh, through the Midlands Centre for Data Driven uh, Metrology. Um, at a training seminar that, that the MCDDM held. Um, that was uh, hosted by um, University of Nottingham and uh, be between Rolls-Royce, Coventry University and Institute of Measurement and Control. We described some of the challenges we had on metrology skills and what we thought might be a good thing to do about it. 
that directly led then to the formation of the Metrology Skills Alliance. Um, the INSTEM-C have been really uh, um, uh, excellent in kind of publicising this through some of their um, their various communications media and we started to then build that group and get more and more people participating. In 2022 we were focusing on really drafting the documents um, and, and that's really where a lot of the heavy lifting has been done in terms of creating the content of the NMSA. Um, we tested that content with the group towards the end of last year and then now um, when we've now got all of the kind of uh, documents created with all the branding is sorted out and what we want to do is a period of beta testing with wider people who may be users of the standards to get additional feedback before they're formally published. So the actual standards themselves are split into uh, three sections. We have the NMSA 1, which defines the uh, kind of core skills um, required for metrology and um, things like the metrology fundamentals, um, how you go about capturing metrology requirements and planning the, the metrology task and then developing the measurement systems, uh, analysing it and ultimately operating that and, and reporting the results out. And um, together with those kind of generic metrology tasks that apply to any metrology discipline, we've defined a set of skill levels that range from a foundation level through to level one, uh, which is more about a practitioner. Um, uh, level two is somebody who's kind of overseeing things and level three is more, more of an approval role. What we have then in addition to NMSA one is NMSA two, and that is the um, kind of discipline specific skills um, applicable to a, a kind of a logical group of uh, metrologists in industry or, or, or in a, another particular scientific sector, for example. So um, we've done this very specifically um, in a way that allows um, a, a different group to add NMSA2 content that's relevant for their, for their users, rather than making this prescriptive and aligned to things like the SI units we try to keep it uh, a little bit more flexible. So we've got the um, manufacturing group that's uh, developed a, uh, a standard that's applicable for uh, mainly for kind of um, uh, component and assembly manufacture. So it's uh, heavy on dimensional, but a few other things as well. Um, we've got a group um, involved in flow that have developed um, a set of standards that cover the kind of um, main aspects of, of flow metrology in fluids and gases. Um, and we have groups um, looking at force and control, and then also other groups thinking about future NMSA2 standards. And then finally, we've got NMSA3, which is about the qualification processes. And this is about um, enabling individuals or organisations to demonstrate that their competencies or their training resources are aligned to the NMSA standard. So the NMSA skill levels, um, We've aligned these skill levels to things like uh, the RQF uh, and uh, things like professional um, engineering frameworks to make sure these are as uh, consistent as, as possible. And it ranges from the sort of foundation level, which is really targeted at non-metrologists. Uh, this might be apl applicable to engineers that are not directly involved in metrology. They might be metrology users. They, they're sort of maybe um, using measurement data. Or it might be um, other people such as managers or, um, or, or or other staff who need to have an appreciation of metrology, metrology but don't need to do it full time. We then go from level one, two and three. And level one is really around um, targeted at people who are actually conducting measurements, usually um, in line with some sort of defined procedure. We then have level two, which is about people that are overseeing those people uh, conducting measurements at level one. And then level three is typically somebody who is maybe approving or developing measurement systems that are then uh, used by the level ones and level twos. Those levels are very consistent with how the non-destructive testing uh, groups have, uh, have managed their skill levels. So the actual standards themselves, um, there are a series of documents and in those documents we have uh, essentially um, some skills statements associated with each particular topic. So you can see here you've got a topic on environments and it describes the skills uh, that people should be able to demonstrate 
through those different um, levels and we've provided guidance associated with these to help the interpretation. What you've then got in NMSA2 is a little bit more detailed content that goes into the different technology levels associated um, uh, with each different level. So using those NMSA standards, um, uh, individuals um, could use the um, NMSA to be able to look at their skills relative to their objectives and their kind of career journey. Um, so you might be able to use it to do a gap analysis to identify where you've got to grow your skills. An organisation may be able to use it uh, to monitor the skills of, uh, of their teams. So, for example, a lot of businesses have uh, things like skills matrices that show how many people have got the required skills at different levels to perform the tasks. So you can see here illustrated um, an organisation might have a number of level three metrologists and it might be a uh, skills matrix might be saying that three out of the three level three metrologists the business has are have all got the required level of competency. Um, you might identify some gaps and say that maybe uh, uh, six out of the seven level two metrologists have got the right skills and there's clearly one individual there that maybe has some gaps to close. And, and then you might be able to apply it more broadly in the organisation and uh, for example in this case it may be 60 people have been identified and, as needing the foundational metrology understanding but there's quite a significant gap in, in terms of those people's ability. And, and typically um, this will give people a much more kind of standardised way of doing these assessments with something that's recognised across industry. Another example might be how organisations could use this to develop role profiles. Um, you could then take the um, skills statements at the different levels and then construct those into a, a role profile for a particular person within your business. Um, you could then also use those role profiles to then uh, recruit externally and create job adverts. For example, you might want to recruit a level three metrologist and because the standard is, uh, will be uh, understood by, uh, by the wider world, a level three metrologist will, will have a common meaning just like it does in NDT. And then also um, for organisations developing training, you'll be able to tailor your training specifications for the learning outcomes you're looking for at each particular level. And again, doing that in a standardised way that's re recognised by industry. So the plan for NMSA, we, um, we now have the drafts of NMSA 1 and uh, in NMSA 2 the manufacturing and flow standards and they're all ready for beta testing and we're really keen to get people um, access to those standards and get feedback on those before we publish them. We've got teams starting to look at force and control and also talking to other teams about potential future NMSA 2 standards. Anybody who's interested in forming an NMSA2 group, um, we'd be really interested to hear from you and, and really encourage people to um, look at maybe developing a standard that meets the need of their users. And then finally, we've got um, the qualification processes. Um, we've just done the work to scope that out um, and do some planning around that, but that work is yet to fully launch. So our plans. Um, this year we're, we're just doing that beta testing and we're, we're starting to do that now and we're aiming to publish the NMSA 1 and NMSA 2 standards by the middle of 2023. What we're then looking towards doing is confirming some longer term funding for the NMSA to allow us to develop things like open source uh, training to cover the foundational levels, those really basic things. Um, we'd like to kind of make that um, available and, and much more flexible than, than, than the resources we've got today. We want to be able to convert all of these standards to an international standard, something such as ISO or, or an equivalent to that. And we also want to be able to make sure we've got the funding in place to support the qualification processes. So those qualification processes, we're in the middle of forming the working group now. And again, we'd really welcome participation from people who've got something to offer that group. 
we're expecting that group to then uh, begin developing some content throughout the rest of this year and early into next year and then uh, conduct some testing in 2024 with a plan to publish at the end of 2024 and early 2025. So if you'd like to get involved in, in STEMC, you can uh, drop us an email um, uh, on, on the link you can see there or, or contact um, Steph Smith, who's the chief exec at STEMC, uh, Professor Trevor Turman at Coventry University, who um, is professor of metrology there, and or myself, uh, Phil Bamford at Rolls-Royce. And the three of us have uh, uh, formed a steering group for the NMSA and we'd really welcome participation from, from anybody who's interested. And also you can find more information on our website at the link there. Thank you very much.